This coming Sunday is Trinity Sunday. This is such an important day that I will spend longer than three minutes on my talk. There are two common responses to the idea that God is Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The first is among preachers. Their feeling is worry. What will I preach on on Sunday when it comes to the service? What will I say that's coherent? And the second one is for ordinary Christians. It's embarrassment. How does this make sense? How can three be one and one be three? And how can I explain to my friends who are dubious about my faith or even sceptical? Well, to deal with these two concerns, we usually adopt some pretty crude illustrations. The least bad one, I think, is the clover leaf. At least it's organic. Three leaves, one plant. Then we have the idea of water, ice and steam. And I heard recently that someone was talking about explaining the Trinity with lollipops. I've no idea how that works. The worst of these, it seems to me, reduces God, even to some sort of physical apparatus, and objectifies God. They certainly add nothing to my experience of God. They're simply technical explanations, information if you will. Well, the first thing to say is this. God is not Trinity exactly. This is not the final word on God. It is not a definition. The idea of Trinity, that God is three and God is one, is our best understanding so far of who God is. An idea that emerged a long time ago in the third century. If understood... It can change everything, how we regard life, how we experience it, and how we know God. If understood incorrectly, it is simply ignored as being lifeless and being a bland theory. One theologian once said this, If the doctrine of the Trinity was removed from the church, 95% of what we do will carry on unchanged. We ignore it. So what can we say about God as Trinity that will change things? So we talk about God as being Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and that is right. And maybe we imagine this as being like the three corners of a triangle, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Or even three points on a circle. We go on to say that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit live in a relationship with each other. Which is true, again, to a degree. But they don't just live in a relationship. They are the relationship. They are what happens between Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Not separate, not individuals, not apart. Sadly, we have emphasised the corners of the triangle or the points on the circle which emphasise separateness and appear static. But the life of God swirls between these three persons. God is not dynamic, not still and static. God is an energy and we call the energy love and such life and love cannot be still. First and foremost, God is about relating. God is not a being, God is all being. God is relational, God cannot be anything else. So one of the key words that emerged in the 4th century to use to describe this dynamic meant something like a turning wheel or a circular dance. And God is, however, if we take the image of the circular dance, God, again, is not the participants in the dance so much as the dance itself. That creative, life-giving movement from which it seems everyone benefits. This, of course, is a long way from our common stuffy notion 
of God as Trinity. That idea that we ignore except when it comes to our liturgies when we assert it in our prayers. Well over this long year of Covid and our lockdowns we have known, well we know don't we how important relating and relationships are and the links we will go to to try and relate to other people and be in touch with them. We even sometimes break the rules. We just want to be in touch. We just want to see them. We just want to touch them. You see, it's not natural to be separate from each other. In fact, it's not godly. And we even put up those dreadful Zoom calls, don't we, to try to overcome our separateness. When I was a prison chaplain, those prisoners who, are, who were on isolation, as, it, as it's sometimes called, would be uh, um, in, in a wing where there'd be separate cells. And these men would do anything to try and communicate with others down the same corridor. Even with people they hated and were their enemies, they just needed to be in touch somehow with others. Why? Why are we like this? We are like this because it is in our DNA to be like God, who is all relationship. Even the worst offenders have it in their DNA. And of course we call this DNA made in the image of God. We have an urge to mirror what is already happening in the life of God. So it was, as it were, that Jesus left the dance in order to come and invite us into the dance. God stepped out of the circle of the dance to bring us into the community of God, someone once wrote. You see, we haven't simply become Christians to believe something. We have been asked to participate in the life of God, a very strong theme in the writings of St. Paul. This is why Jesus says to the Father, I in them and you in me, you know, closely connected. To the disciples he says, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And also the Spirit lives with you and will be in you. This is our natural state. You see, I am not an individual first. I am the sum of my relationships, supremely the relationship of God. You are not an individual first. You are the sum of your relationships and supremely the relationship which exists within God. In fact, sometimes I think the, the phrase an individual is almost like a anti-Christian, anti-Jesus term. We have spent too long emphasising our separateness which of course is our prime sin, and long forgotten that we are joined at the hip with God and should be with each other. We have fallen out the dance and we desperately need to get back into the dance. So today, what can we say? Well, let's try and recapture something of what we have lost and what we have forgotten. In that relating, to each other, those we know and those we don't know, even to our enemies and those people we disagree with, who actually we try to stay separate from. By relating better to the world, its ecosystems and its economics, to other nations and other nationalities and people who we fear. Let's try and spot the dance of God in all things. For the dance of God is everywhere. We just haven't been looking for it. We thought God was elsewhere. When God has been here all the time. Inviting us into this swirl of love and energy and life we call God. So the invitation is to join the dance today. Even in the simplest things. In talking to a loved one, in stroking a dog, in listening to a stranger, in sharing a gift, in building a house, 
in sorting a spreadsheet. I don't know what you do during the week. In each of these things, we can start to become aware that the dance of God is actually here. Thank God that God is Trinity. God would be so much less colourful and life-giving if this were not so.